All right, hello everyone, and welcome to our student panel webinar. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. A um, couple things before we get going. A um, couple things I want to talk about. This is our technical help slide. Um, if you are having troubles hearing me, if you can't hear me right now, please call in. So if you're one of those, um, you can also see um, some of the information if you would like to join by phone, if that worked better for you, um, our attendee webinar password, um, and our access code as well. Um, moving on. Um, if you have a question um, tonight, please use our uh, question and answer feature, so our Q&A feature, not the chat feature. And our team of admissions counselors will be happy to help and do our best to give you a quick answer. Also, if you have a question for the panelists, they'll let us know, and we'll get that um, put out to our panelists as well. Um, and if also, if you have any technical issues, uh, use the chat feature, and then the admission the admissions counselors will help you troubleshoot that as well. Um, but tonight, we're going to have five panelists. And we're going to start introducing some of our panelists. Um, uh, I am myself am a panelist. My name is Lane Larum. Um, I'm a senior here at Montana State studying agricultural business. I've worked in the admissions office uh, for quite some time now. Um, I'm also involved in fraternity and sorority life, fraternity and sorority life um, uh, ASMSU. I'm a College of Ag senator. I'm involved in the Hillman Scholar Program um, as well as the Collegiate Stock Growers Program and, and the tour guide here on campus. I'm going to invite Katie Delker next to come on and introduce herself. Hi, um, so my name is Katie. I am a second year student studying microbiology on the pre-vet track, and I am from a small town called Soldotna in Alaska. So shout out to any Alaskans who might be on the, on the chat. Um, <laughs> And um, some of the things I'm involved in, I'm uh, also a senator on the campus student government, the Associated Students of Montana State University, kind of a mouthful, so we abbreviate to ASMSU. Um, I'm on the Club Nordic Ski Team, I'm on the Country Dance Club, and I enjoy hiking and getting outdoors, so. Awesome, thank you, Katie. Uh, Tucker, would you like to introduce yourself next? Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Tucker DeBolt. I am from the good old Great Falls, Montana, so I am local, lo local. Uh, I've been, I'm a senior this year in the uh, College of Engineering. I'm a comp sci major. I spent a lot of time out outdoors. Uh, I love the nickname Trout U because that's what I spent a lot of time doing. It's fishing, so it's a lot of fun. And then as well as I, I do a lot of stuff with the sports here, which is super cool. Awesome. Thank you very much, Tucker. And Melissa, would you be uh, happy to introduce yourself as well? Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Melissa. I'm a third year student here at MSU studying political science with a minor in global studies. I'm originally from Northern California, a little bit outside of Sacramento in a very agriculturally based town. Um, I'm also part of ASMSU. Um, I am an at large senator as well as a Senate speaker pro tempore. And then I'm president of Fuerza Latin X, a member of the First Generation Association, Political Science Society, an orientation leader in the summer, and then I also work at the MSU Bookstore. Awesome. Okay. Um, that's where our panelists for now, Cody, will be joining us in just a second. Um, I would like to remind you, if you have any questions this evening, um, to please use the question and answer feature um, so you can get your questions answered um, here on our webinar tonight. But the first question I'm going to talk about is for out-of-state students. So I imagine we have a few out-of-state attendees tonight. Um, so we have a couple out of state students here with us. So what's your, why don't you tell you, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, what's it like to be an out of state student and what to expect um, coming from Montana State. So whoever wants to take it, go ahead. Katie. <laughs> <laughs> can talk about it for sure. Um, so coming to MSU from a small town, um, I thought it would be a huge adjustment, but to be honest, it was kind of like coming away, coming to a home away from home. Um, Bozeman is a really tight knit community. And that's something that I was really um, scared that I was going to lose when I came to school. Um, so coming to a new state and this, it was only my second time, my moving into my dorm was my second time in the state of Montana. So it was kind of a jump a leap of faith, but um, it's a leap that I would definitely make over again because I've just absolutely loved getting to know not only Bozeman um, for the community, but for everyone else who's here at MSU who's come from all over. Um, it's it's just a really, really great experience to kind of get out and try something new um, while also being in a really, really fun location. Cool. All right. Um... Is there any big piece of advice you have for out-of-state students? 
biggest piece of advice is to get involved in something right off the bat. Um, you don't have to stick with it, but it's just the best way to get involved and to kind of feel a little bit more comfortable when you're out of your um, out of your element. Um, but definitely uh, the first week of school, there's going to be a ton of stuff thrown at you and don't be afraid to jump in. It's a lot of fun. Cool. All right. Um, and then for in-state students, um, maybe Tucker, you want to field this one. Uh, what's it like for in-state students? What should they expect coming to Montana State? Uh, a lot of the same stuff. Um, most of the time for in-state students, you'll be going to school with some of the people you graduated with. So you kind of have some sort of base here, but uh, going around and like introducing yourself to people, because some people may be from a place that's not like Montana. So like showing them around is super cool. Uh, a really good friend of mine was from California, never seen snow before. And so we took him out skiing and he absolutely loved it. So it, introduce yourself, like help out people because it's Montana's beautiful. We should show it off. Yeah. Um, and then coming from California, we have a question from Jake. Uh, has the weather in Montana been a shock for um, uh, Melissa? Can you talk maybe about what the weather like from coming from a little different place to Montana? Yeah, totally. Um, so prior to moving to Montana, I had never seen snow fall from the sky and I had only seen snow in person four times. So my first winter was definitely a shock. Um, but I think as I've lived here, as years have gone on, I've gone a lot used to it. I think my biggest piece of advice is good shoes, good clothes, invest in stuff that's really going to serve you in the winter. Um, and also, don't be afraid to slip. It happens to everyone, even the Montanans. So, uh, yeah, good shoes. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. All right. Thanks for the question, Jake. Once again, if you have any questions, please put those in the chat or the question and answer feature. Um, also, I think on a topic we're talking about coming to Bozeman, one of the topics we always wonder about is roommates. Um, so starting with Cody, maybe you want to talk about your roommate experience when you came to Montana State? Yeah, so uh, you're definitely going to have a couple options. Number one being if you know somebody for me in state, uh, being able to go with some of my friends, I was able to choose who I wanted. I requested them um, when I applied for housing and they requested me. And that's a almost surefire guarantee that you're going to be roommates when uh, everything rolls out as far as your dorm goes, but it's it's really truly a pretty magical experience if you're also paired um, with somebody else. You're going to fill out a questionnaire and they're going to ask you a couple things like, uh, are you a night owl or morning person? Kind of what times you're getting up and going to bed, what your class schedule may be. Um, and then my favorite one is they're going to ask you, is your room pristine, really clean, or do they classify it as lived in, which is uh, code for being dirty. So that kind of gives the housing um, directors a chance to match you up to somebody that's going to uh, fit well with maybe your lifestyle, what you're used to, and certainly the schedule that you'd have to deal with on your roommates. And I say they do a pretty bang up job as far as uh, matching you with people you've never met before. And who knows, they could be roommates lifelong. Yeah. Um, does anybody else have another roommate experience they'd like to share, with, like a, a funny roommate experience of maybe made best friends with them? Um, I would say. Uh... My freshman year, I did um, the housing survey that they provide, and um, I entered all of my answers, honestly, and I got matched up with someone that I'm currently still best friends with three years later. Um, she was Montanan, and I'm from California, so it was kind of the perfect mixture. She really, like, welcomed me in um, and showed me around the place and got me used to my first Montana um, winter. So I had also had a phenomenal roommate experience. Awesome, awesome. And then, uh, Tucker, do you have any like comments on maybe what your residence hall experience was like or recommendations for anybody when they're filling out their application? Yeah, be honest. Be 100% honest with your roommate application because you, uh, if you lie a bit and you end up with a roommate that is kind of interesting and you guys don't match, that no one's happy. So uh, my freshman year, I you know filled it out. I was kind of put into a room. Our roommates and I had a little disagreements, but we eventually you work it out, which is great because your RAs are always there to make sure they help you with all your problems and stuff like that. So if you uh, yeah, just be honest and uh, talk to your RAs as, lo as well. Awesome. All right, um, we're gonna keep moving on here with the questions, and I think one of the things that is important when you come to campus is getting involved in activities. So. Um, all of our panelists tonight are uh, really awesome people and they're involved on campus. And so I'm going to have them talk a little bit about their activities and kind of why they enjoy them and kind of the takeaways they have from it. So, um, Cody, what uh, activities are you a part of? And tell us a little bit about them. 
Yeah, sorry, I'm trying to figure out my video here, but I'll, I'll, while I'm working on that, I'm going to talk. I certainly am a very involved person, and uh, when I looked at college, being involved in doing um, activities and sort of being plugged in, as I like to say, across campus was very important to me. Uh, and I've stretched myself about as far as I can go and still have good academics in the process. So uh, for me, I'm a College of Ag student undergrad, and so it all revolves around there. I'm in about every club that you can name, including uh, collegiate young farmers and ranchers, stock growers, and everything that stretches across there, as well as fraternity and sorority life. I'm a part of the uh, ag fraternity on campus known as Alpha Gamma Rho. Uh, Lynn and I both are a part of that fraternity together. Uh, and then I took that as far as wanting to get involved with the student body on campus, being uh, Associated Students MSU, which I'm sure some others will touch on a little more in depth, but I serve on the finance board there. And I really have uh, taken it to the next step, being a part of the admissions office here, which leads me to talking to you guys today. Uh, and that gave me an appreciation for my education more than anything. Uh, college is not cheap and it was uh, a way for me to know that what I'm doing is also helping students and that that's what kids are paying for. So as a tour guide, being an advocate and as an admission ambassador, uh, it really has allow, allowed me to enjoy my college drinks. And at the end of the uh, my four years, ideally, I'll know that the experience was worth a little more than the paper. Awesome, thanks Cody. Melissa, would you like to share what you're involved in? Yeah, totally. Um, so when I talk about my involvement here on campus, I always like to use the analogy that once you dip your foot into the pool of involvement, it just makes you want to dive right in. Um, I got involved in ASMSU first uh, at the end of my freshman year going into my sophomore year. And um, I think through ASMSU, I found um, that joining multiple clubs and multiple organizations here on campus really gives you that full round experience in college. Um, when I became the president of Latinx this year and became an orientation leader last summer, it still opened me up to new leadership experiences that I hadn't experienced in the past. So that's also a wonderful thing about MSU is it teaches you new forms of involvement and new forms of leadership with everything that you decide to join. Awesome. Katie? Yeah, I... Honestly, originally got involved um, mostly just to meet people, but um, I was involved in student government and in sports in high school. So I thought it'd be a really great way to kind of keep that involvement going. Um, and also kind of, uh, it kind of breaks up your class schedule a little bit to have something fun going on after school um, in the evenings. Um, so as I said, I'm a senator on the campus student government. Everyone's dropped ASMSU in the chat today, but um, it's just, it's a really, really cool experience because you get to be surrounded by a group of people who are really, it's a diverse group of people, but we all have the same values of just wanting to make a difference and help 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 each other out. So um, it's been one of the most influential experiences since I've been here at college is working with other students who are really passionate leaders. Um, and also just kind of getting involved in fun stuff. Like if you have a sport that you're like really enjoyed in high school, um, I really enjoyed Nordic skiing in high school. So I wanted to keep it up here. And the club team here has provided me with a team in Montana and a team that I can travel with. Um, and it's just a very, very fun way to stay active, get outside and have a group of people who will do it with you. Um, and you also can get discounted passes to some ski areas. That's a, another highlight of club sports. Um, and also within uh, student involvement, um, being a tour guide on campus is actually one of the funniest and funnest experiences I've ever had in my life. Um, you get to meet a ton of new people and getting to talk to people like you about potentially coming to MSU and having the time of your life like all of us are. Um, I definitely, uh, I find much appreciation in that um, and I enjoy getting to speak with everyone. So. And then I had a, saw a question about the Country Swing Dancing Club. Do you want to do a little plug for that, Katie? Oh, I would so very much love to. Okay, so I'm from Alaska. Um, and I had no idea how to dance coming to Montana. Um, but the first thing I did when I got here was go to a country dance club at MSU Swing Dance. Um, they are free to students. They're here on a campus right um, in our student union building, actually, in one of our ballrooms. Um, and it is a great way to come learn with other students. And to get involved in this club, we have our email linked at the MSU website. We are part of the, um, we are on the list of registered clubs here on campus. So if anyone wants to get involved um, upon coming to MSU, um, we will, uh, we, we love having new people on the team. But come one, come all, because I learned how to dance and join the club at the same time. So you do not need to know how to dance before joining. So that's my plug. 
Awesome. Uh, Tucker, do you want to talk a little bit about your involvement on campus? Yeah, sure. Um, so when I was a freshman and stuff like that, I did a bunch of the dance clubs and stuff like that, uh, as well as I was very huge in the sports. I joined uh, intramural volleyball and stuff like that, and eventually club volleyball. Uh, and so I love hanging out. I love doing sports here on campus. It's a lot of fun. I'm actually the uh, captain of an intramural volleyball team, uh, shortest in the league, 5'8", by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's actually a lot of fun. Uh, you get to hang out with people, play sports, uh, as well. A lot of off-campus activities, uh, like as well. So it's super cool. Um, but mostly sports and stuff like that. Uh, I've been trying to get a bowling club here started. Uh, I know it's cheesy, but I want to start the Alley Cats. But we'll see if that <laughs> we'll see if that works out. But yeah, that's about it. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, everybody. Um, we have a few questions coming through the chat about um, coming to campus and bringing vehicles. Um, did someone bring a vehicle um, to campus their first year? I, Over panels? I can take that. Um, so I guess I kind of am in a unique position with uh, where I served my freshman year and uh, where I live. I'm about two and a half hours east of Bozeman. So uh, that made the drive not too um, far for me, which is uh, definitely something that you can work around being in Montana using the public transportation. Uh, however, I served in a position that required me to s travel across the state uh, my freshman year, which I did end up bringing uh, my pickup. I will say one short little personal plug, do not buy a diesel and do not bring a diesel to Bozeman. That was a bad idea, uh, but here I am with it. And so, yes, MSU does allow you to have a vehicle on campus and um, based on their parking services, you have to buy a specific pass that is called the Bison Pass. Um, and those are the parking lots you're allowed to park in and you're allowed to do that as a freshman. However, I uh, would strongly encourage it's not necessary being as we have some amazing uh, uh, public transportation here at Bozeman as well as on campus, including the streamlined bus system, which is completely free to students. They take you up to Bridger's uh, Ski Mountain as well as all the way out to Big Sky for a, a $3 charge. So I think that that's some pretty awesome opportunities as well as the dorms are really striving to make sure they have plenty of bike storage and opportunities to take those. So I'm sure some can expand, but that's my quick take on that. Cool. And then Kate, did anybody not bring a vehicle their freshman year? Yeah, I can touch a little bit on that. So I currently don't have a vehicle and I'm a third year here. Um, I have lived both close to camp. Oh, I currently live close to campus and I have lived far from campus and I didn't find um, honestly a lot of trouble getting to my house and to campus. Um, like Cody mentioned, our streamlined bus system is excellent and uh, goes all around Bozeman. So even now when I have to run errands or go to the grocery store and none of my friends are um, heading that way, I can still take streamline and um, it's been really, really easy and convenient for me. Downtown is about a 15 minute walk from campus. So if you want to go and explore downtown at any time, um, it's pretty close and convenient. Awesome. Thank you too for that. Um, maybe we'll talk a little bit about some of the fun events that we got going on in Bozeman um, for students. Um, I've seen some questions about sports um, and then what's to do other than sports at Montana State. So um, what's, uh, what's some of the things that you guys like to do for fun? Um, I could, I'll talk about football games. Um, so one cool thing about being a student here at Montana State is you get into all of the sporting events for free. Um, so part of being a student um, is getting a cat card, which is your student identification card. And so when you get to these games, you'll be able to swipe in and get into the game for free. So football, there's a little bit of a caveat. You have to go on Monday and claim your ticket, your free ticket. Um, since it's, it's only the first 5,000, they get that ticket. But you still get it for free and you get into the game and you swipe in. Um, our football games have been a blast. Our football team made it to the national championship last year, the semifinals this year. Our basketball team went to March Madness, um, both the last year for men and then last year for women. Um, so all of our teams are just balling out. And one of my favorite experiences is going to those games and enjoying the atmosphere and being a part of a really cool time for um, sports. So um, you can get a buddy pass ticket for about 10 bucks on the side, um, but those are also limited as well but it's pretty reasonable to get an extra student ticket for 10 bucks. So um, I'd like to hear from our panelists on what else is fun to do in Bozeman other than um, the sports scene. I think we can take on, Go ahead, 
<laughs> I can take on a little bit of the outdoor activities that we have because um, can't talk about Bozeman without talking about the beautiful M Trail that has our iconic big white M on the side of the Bridger Ridge. Um, so we have tons of outdoor, out uh, outdoor activities that you can get involved in, um, and they're right in your backyard as a student here at MSU. Um, one of my favorite things to do is to go hiking. Um, I love going up to the M Trail uh, because the trail just keeps going um, and going. It actually goes for like 20 miles if you do the whole thing, but um, it's just a really, really um, great way to get outside and enjoy the Bozeman area. Um, and one thing that I might segue into is our outdoor recreation program here on campus. Um, so we do have a student-owned center um, that you can rent gear from right here on campus and it is super affordable because it's not for profit um, and it's a great way if you want to rent some gear try something new they also offer expeditions where you can try out new things like they have ice climbing rock climbing nordic skiing downhill skiing all that stuff they have all the gear you could ever need um, but just that i'll highlight the outdoor stuff because it is it's always there's always something to do you'll never be bored cool what else what else do we like to do for fun um, other than out, outdoors and sports. Does anybody want to talk about maybe some of the concerts or any of the other cool things they've been a part of? That's what I was going to bring up, concerts. Uh, before I came to Bozeman, I come from, you know, a town that doesn't have a lot of concerts, so uh, I, they have concerts all the time here, which I thought was crazy. Uh, we offer them in the, uh, the football stadium, like Imagine Dragons was here a couple years ago, which is super cool. Uh, I got Cody Johnson tickets uh, in the Brook Rudin Fieldhouse for like $10 a piece. So they're affordable tickets to concerts as well as like, and those are just the ones MSU offers. Uh, we have a concert venue in Bozeman called The Elm. Uh, and they have, you know, some really cool, interesting concerts to play every once in a while. Uh, I'm more of a country guy, which is kind of cool because they, they have a lot of country artists. But they also have, like, rock artists like Imagine Dragons and then, you know, like, different types of artists, which is super cool. So I thought, like, the, the music scene here is incredible, which I thought is amazing. So that that's my favorite thing to do outside of campus. Awesome. Cool. Melissa, you got anything to add? I was honestly going to add on to um, what Tucker said with the music scene. Um, we also have music on Main in the summer, which is a really, really cool uh, kind of at-large Bozeman event. And every single Thursday, there's some music downtown. You can walk around, get some food, and it's a really, really fun time. It's one of my favorite Bozeman events. And on top of that, coming up here pretty soon to plug ASMSU, we're going to be having our annual Battle of the Bands concert, uh, where we have local student bands compete with one another, and then students get to vote. And it's really like kind of like five concerts wrapped into a couple of hours. And I think um, the students who put it on put do such an excellent job. And um, I think it's one of my favorite ASMSU events, at least. Awesome. Yeah, um, I like to say that being on I-90 has its perks. We have some artists that have to drive by every once in a while, so we get to drag them into Bozeman. So, yeah, awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, the next question we're going to talk about is maybe some of our um, su student support services. So. Um, a lot of those are going on in the Strand Union building right here. Um, but uh, do let's start with uh, Melissa. Do you want to talk about some of the cool student services we have on campus? Yeah, we have um, a ton of student services, and I always like to say that um, we're always looking for a new way to implement new services, such as this year we. Um, opened up an office called Off Campus Life. So just like how we have a office that covers everything for people who are living on campus, we now have an office that deals with um, roommate matching, um, rental agreements, talking to your landlord, what that looks like, um, rental agreements and what that looks like. There's um, lawyers on hand to help students with tenant landlord problems. Um, I also want to plug the DISC, which stands for the Diversity and Inclusion Student Commons in the basement of the sub. Um, and in the DISC uh, is a really, really welcoming and safe space for students to go to um, who maybe fall into a protected identity or just anyone who kind of wants to feel like they're in a safe space and feel like they're supported. Uh, they also have great snacks all the time. They have, I think, the most comfortable couch on campus if you just want to chill out and take a break from your academics. So the DISC is definitely one of my favorite student services, um, and they just do such incredible work. Awesome. Uh, Tucker, you want to talk about some of uh, the student support services you've used? Uh, I have definitely used the tutoring service and the Math and Stats Center. 
uh, a lot <laughs> because, you know, math is hard for everybody, especially me. Um, I was in the math and stats center for my stats class almost every day after class, which is awesome uh, because it's completely, the math and stats center is completely free to MSU students. Uh, and it's great. They have all their different tables for all the different classes. So if you were struggling with calculus or, you know, like different ones like linear algebra, stuff like that, they have people there to help you, which is great. That is entirely free to students as well as we, um, I, we have a writing center as well. So if you struggle with writing essays, that is across the hallway, which is super cool. That is also free to students. Uh, as well as we have a Smarty Cat tutoring system that is in our Montana State Library. They offer uh, tutoring for most of our classes, which is really cool. Uh, I needed it for some of my coding classes. They're only $2 an hour, uh, which is super nice. But uh, if that's kind of too expensive for you, they offer scholarships and credits and stuff like that. So you're able to get help because we want to make sure students are getting help here. We don't want to see you guys struggle. We want to see you guys succeed. So that's those are some of the really cool services I've seen on campus and used. Awesome. Uh, I'll throw a quick plug in there real quick as a personal experience. As I mentioned, I was gone quite a bit for that leadership experience my freshman year, and that does take an impact on your grades. Um, and I said that if I ever won the lottery, I'd give it all to the Alan Yarnell Student Center for Success because of uh, what they've done and how they've been able to turn my grades around for me. The success advisors that will build a study schedule for you and create a study plan uh, truly kind of helped me get back on track. And I would recommend their services to anybody, whether you think you're going to struggle in classes or you are. Uh, go in there before it's too late. So that's my 2%. Awesome. Um, Katie, any closing thoughts on student services? Um, just kind of a plug for um, any support services that are more mental health oriented. Um, we do have a center called the Voice Center um, that is a advocate center and also just a place for students to feel supportive. They have a helpline. It's completely free to students to use um, and it's just a really safe space. Um, many students uh, who come to MSU either become an advocate or utilize the service. So um, just to know that it is here and for you all to use in any um, time that you might need some extra support. Cool. All right. Um, we're going to take a little break from some of the questions I have and answer some of the questions we've gotten from the chat. And so this one was, were you nervous to share a dorm slash live with a stranger? How did you overcome that? Um, does anybody want to speak up on that? I'll say something really quickly. Um, yeah, it was very interesting to share a room with somebody, but um, just a great way to get over that whole nervousness is like when you guys sit down to do your rooming agreements, you talk about, you know, because you're gonna be living with this person for the next year. And so you gotta talk about all the stuff, like that's sometimes some personal stuff, sometimes some stuff that you guys have to set some ground rules down. And so uh, just talk to them and it makes it less awkward and less weird because, you know, everyone does it, everyone lives with somebody. So it's it's gonna be, it's gonna be a challenge, but as long as you guys overcome it, it's gonna be great. Yeah, I also wanted to uh, mention really quickly, um, our RAs here on campus are some of th just the best people all around. And um, if you are feeling nervous or possibly like when you get to um, meet your roommate and it's still maybe like there's tension or it's still kind of weird, RAs are really, really good at kind of making all floor activities sometimes or maybe talking to you and your roommate. And um, I mean, my RA my freshman year was a lot less than an, a authority figure and much more of a friend and really helped me with um, academics, uh, making new friends as someone who was coming out of state. Um, and luckily I had a really good roommate situation, but um, I know a lot of my friends who had a little bit of trouble with their roommate, but I uh, got it really figured out uh, through their RAs and some mediation services we have on campus. Cool. Um, yeah, awesome job. Um, we're gonna, we have another question that is about student jobs and is it better to work on campus or off campus? So um, I'll talk a little bit about what we have for student jobs. Um, so we do have uh, what's called the student, on, uh, student employment fair and on campus um, employment fair where a lot of these different um, offices will offer jobs to students that are super flexible for hours. So they understand that you're a student first and they're gonna help you find like, hey, you can work from eight to 10, but then you have class from 10 to two, and then you can come back in afterwards and work a little bit. So um, that's kind of a perk of being on campus is that you get to kind of have more flexible hours and you're already on campus for school. So it works out really well to stay on it. Have any of you worked off campus of our panelists? 
I, I guess have. not. I've worked off campus. Uh, would somebody, uh, does anyone else want to talk? Or? No, go. Go okay, for it. So I, I want to throw a little plug in. I work at the Great Rocky Mountain Toy Co. It is a children's toy shop on Maine. Um, he was like, he put in a little thing for the Brecken Clinic. And so I, I signed up and he's like, why do you want to work at a toy shop? And I was like, I've never worked at a toy shop before. <laughs> so uh, it was a lot of fun. I got to, I, I had to hand him a paper schedule of my, my class schedules. He really did work around my schedule and stuff like that. Um, is really great. He donates a lot to Montana State, which is super cool. Um, so the, as well as it, at first, it was hard to balance what I was doing with class and work. But uh, after my schedule got kind of set down for both of them, I was able to work out a plan and work out some way to uh, figure it out and cement it. As well as if something came up, like a surprise exam, I would tell my my boss. My boss would be like, "School comes first. You gotta look. You can have it." So it's really nice. Cool. All right. I hope that answered your questions a little bit, um, but there are definitely pros and cons to both, but um, either way, totally doable for either. Um, the other one is, do you have any friends that came to MSU from the East Coast? Um, how is that adjusted, ju adjustment for them? Um, I do have a friend that's from the East Coast. He's from Maine, um, and he transitioned very well. Um, one of the things that we have happened at the beginning of school is MSA, MSU debut. And so that's all about getting you out of your residence hall and trying to meet people with cool events um, that have like concerts or they have food trucks that come out. And we have events like Catapalooza, which is a great way to get involved with all those clubs we talked about earlier. Um, so I would say the adjustment was pretty, fairly easy for them. Um, it's always a little different going somewhere from home. So it's going to take a little bit to get friends. But um, I would say it's nothing to be too worried about it. So yeah. Does anybody have anything to add on that? If not, um, we have one last question that we're going to use out of the chat, and then we'll go back to my questions. But once again, if you have questions, um, use our chat feature or Q&A feature, um, and we'll try to answer them. Wait, uh, but can I interrupt you for a second? Yeah. Uh, I'm the, the faceless guy here on the WebEx. Uh, Lane, we have Reed, who's one of our student ambassadors. And if somebody would want to connect with somebody who's come from the East Coast, uh, we would be happy to connect you with one of our student ambassadors who made that transition, uh, whether it's through email or a WebEx. Uh, we'd be happy to do that stuff. So, Absolutely. He's the boss man, so he can make it happen. Um, last question we have is, can you discuss what support and accommodations are available for students with learning disabilities, um, such as ADHD, dyslexia, um, et cetera. Um, does anybody want to talk about that? Yeah. Um, so, gonna, oh, go you ahead. Go ahead, Quinn. No, you got it. Mm -hmm. So, um, we do have services that are available for students who. Um, either might need uh, additional note taking during classes or might need extended time periods to take exams. And professors are extremely, extremely good at accommodating that. And we do also have an office on campus that um, can help with those accommodations as well. Um, anything along those lines, uh, we do have an office that can um, really accommodate those needs and make things uh, more approachable. Because again, one of the things at MSU is we wanna make sure that A, you feel supported and B, that you feel that we want you here because we want we want you guys here at Bob to be a Bobcat. So um, making sure that you all feel accommodated is something in the classroom as well as outside of the classroom that we really try to focus on. Melissa, anything to add? No, Katie said everything I was going to. Awesome. Cool. So once again, uh, use the chat feature to ask questions and we'll get to them. But tell them, uh, I think it'd be fun to talk a little bit about orientation. So for our seniors currently, um, you're going to be signing up for orientations. Um, and we have an orientation leader with us tonight. So I'm going to let Melissa talk a little bit about orientation. Yeah. Um, so I became an orientation leader for the first time last summer, and then I'm going to be an orientation leader again. This summer, um, I advised the film and photo incoming freshmen, which was, I think, the best experience of my college career. Uh, it's an awesome experience for freshmen. It is three days um, with just like jam-packed MSU and um, how to 
become a part of Bobcat Nation. So you hear from offices around campus, you learn about paying for school, you register for classes at the final, on the final day, um, you talk to your advisor, you make friends. Um, there's a ton of really cool night events. We have a bowling alley here on campus. So um, for the first night, we open it for all the orientation attendees to go to. Um, you get to stay in the dorm, so you get to see what that experience is like. You get to eat in the dining halls. It's really your first dose of campus. Uh, and um, it was just really, really cool to see all the incoming freshmen and uh, to see them hit the register button at the end of the orientation session, I think was my favorite moment. Awesome. Does anybody want to talk about their orientation experience? Tucker, do you want to talk about yours? Uh, yeah, so I uh, actually applied very late for college, and by the time I was accepted, uh, the only orientation that was left was the, like, the three day, like the week before class kind of thing. So I did the the walking around, and everyone, I moved in the same time everyone else did, and then I started my orientation, which was kind of funny. So it was just a very interesting experience. I got to see a bunch of people, I got to do all my, my orientation classes, and they got to tell me about all my stuff. So it was definitely an interesting experience. I wish I would have done the one during the summertime, so I'd known what I was getting into beforehand. But it was—it's still the same. So it was—it 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 was, it was, it was an interesting experience. Yeah, awesome. And a little plug on that: there are four orientations. So Tucker was talking about uh, orientation fours with the one he went to, um, but we have one in June, two in July, and then one right before school starts. So um, definitely think about. Um, Definitely think about that as you're applying for orientation, which one would work the best for you. Um, we're gonna go one more question from the top here. Um, and that's, uh, we'll talk about uh, scholarships. Um, so um, talk about some of the experiences you had with scholarships and then some maybe tips and tricks for scholarships. So we'll have Katie start on that. Um, so we have, some really, really awesome scholarships offered here at MSU. Um, there are a few deadlines that have passed for those of you who are seniors on the panel, um, but for those of you who are juniors, we have some really, really great um, scholarship opportunities. Um, I'll kind of highlight ones through the Honors College just because those are the ones I'm pretty familiar with. Um, but the Honors College here at MSU offers the two larger scholarships, uh, the Presidential and the Provost, um, both of which offer full tuition. Um, they are very competitive scholarships and you do have to be um, admitted into the Honors College to be considered for those. Um, but I definitely would encourage each and every one of you to apply. Um, you never know what the scholarship panel is going to be looking for this year. Um, and it is definitely, um, it is a very large scholarship. Again, it is a full tuition with a stipend added on. Um, and then I can kind of highlight the out of state um, those resources for y'all as well. Um, we do have WUI, the Western Undergraduate Exchange. Um, and again, this deadline has passed um, for anyone who's a senior, but for juniors, just to keep that on your plate. Um, that is for the um, Western, um, Northwestern states in the United States. Um, and we do have more information about that on our website, but um, just wanna let y'all know that that is 1.5 times the in-state tuition. So that is, a fairly large chunk taken off your tuition every year. So again, definitely recommend applying. Um, put some extra intentional time in those essays uh, just because that is one of our more competitive um, scholarships on campus as well. And also the Achievement Award um, is gonna be one that's offered to you upon reporting your GPA um, in high school. So um, that one will be given to you automatically upon your acceptance here at MSU. So just keeping those in mind, those are kind of our out-of-state ones. Melissa, Tucker, do you have any advice for students when it comes to scholarships? Yeah, I would um, just say apply. Uh, we have CAT scholarships, so that uh, opens up and then it closes February 1st. Um, and in the CAT scholarship, you fill out a general application and it matches you and your qualifications, your experiences, your skills, um, uh, anything, your involvement with scholarships that align with all of those things. Um, I always fill out the CAT scholarship and I always seem to get a scholarship that matches me. Um, most people I've talked to have pretty good luck with the CAT scholarships. So I think my biggest advice is just try it out, fill out the general application. Um, it, it never hurts. It doesn't take too much time um, and it's worth seeing what scholarships that you qualify for. Awesome. Tucker, you have any advice? Oh yeah, um, a lot of my scholarships came from high school. So uh, fill out as many as you can is like one of my uh, 
friend said is like you can fill out as many as you can the worst thing they could do is deny you and on the off chance that you actually kind of like kind of fit in one boom you got a thousand dollar there you got a thousand dollar there so like like miss was saying just apply apply for as many as you can uh apply for the ones in high school and apply for the ones uh yeah, msu you wouldn't be you'd be surprised what you get uh and every little penny helps i think so awesome yeah i've never met a college student that said man i wish i would have applied less scholarships so um definitely fill those out for you incoming freshmen all right we're going to switch back to questions in the chat now um so how difficult is the transition from high school to college level courses. Cody, you wanna maybe talk a little bit about this one? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so I would say it really depends on where you're coming from. In some aspects, I came from a high school in Montana. Curriculum level is gonna be a little bit different and uh, your teacher quality is gonna be a little bit different, but college is not high school. And I think that that's the truest thing that I could ever take away from coming here that you most of the time can get through your high school a chemistry class, your high school history class, without a whole lot of studying and, and with minimal effort. And I don't think I'm the only one in that boat when it comes to how my high school experience went. And then when you show up to college, it's a whole new ball game and you realize that the professors really do not care as much if you were gone, if you were part of the uh, the club football, or um, if you, you talk to them beforehand, you need to get your stuff in before, before you're leaving. You need to make sure you have clear and concise communication with them. And I think that the biggest thing that they're trying to teach you is that college is about showing up for four years uh, being able to be on time, being able to be prepared and be educated. And um, they're trying to make sure that whether it's harsh or not, that's happening through their classes as well. And I think in high school, that's kind of the stepping stone that they provide and in college, they're really driving it home. Awesome. Um, does anybody else want to speak on maybe the difference between high school and college level courses? Um, I would love to add on um, a lot of my study habits from high school um, I either built upon or I honestly, I just grew upon all of them, um, but kind of start developing your study habits um, and see what works best for you because you don't get too much direction. Um, eat, everyone studies their own way. Um, and while your professors will do their best to kind of give you direction, um, you kind of have to find a way to um, study, whether you need to study for two to four hours for this exam, or if you need to put a little bit more time in with a group, or you need to do individual work. Just kind of figure out what you're comfortable with, just because that was a little bit of an adjustment I wasn't expecting. But Cool. Um, another question I saw was, like, how much time do you spend in class? So maybe, uh, Tucker, you're an engineering student. Why don't you take them kind of through your typical class size and um, what your kind of day looks like as a student, uh, like time you spend in classes? So as an engineering student, I am constantly in a building called Norma Jorgensen, which is an engineering building. Uh, and it's because a lot of our classes are very hands-on. Uh, you... It's one of those classes where you have to be there so you can learn. And if you miss a day, you'll kind of fall behind because this stuff is intense. It's hard hitting. Uh, a normal day for me, uh, I have classes at nine in the morning. I work through through like my class at nine, then I have class at 10. I give myself off for lunch. Uh, and then I have another class, you know, around one and then one at two. So it they're, uh, they're hard classes, but as long as, you know, uh, I sit next to my friends in my engineering program. Uh, being a senior, I've met a lot of people who also kind of, you know, <laughs> need a little help. So we we kind of help each other out. Uh, if we notice someone's not in class, we kind of text them and we kind of like text bomb them and we're like, you need to be in class. So, <laughs> uh, so it's definitely uh, make sure that you're there, make sure you're in class. Uh, it's easy to kind of fall into the idea of, oh, I don't have to be in class. It's not graded, so I won't go. Uh, that will eventually come to bite you. Uh, I know that firsthand. So showing up to class is extremely important to every degree, every major. Awesome. Melissa, you want to talk a little bit about like your average class sizes and your day-to-day, -day, what class looks like for you? Yeah, so um, I'm a political science student with a minor in global studies. Um, this semester in particular, since I'm a third year, I have about two semesters left. I'm taking a lot of um, upper division classes, which is 300 or above. Um, so that's usually what your uh, junior seniors are going to take, or it just really depends on your credits coming into college. 
Um, so my Tuesday, Thursdays tend to be a little bit heavier. Um, my classes are a little bit longer. They're a little bit more discussion and lecture based where my Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes, um, I only have one this semester, but uh, per each semester, it's typically my Tuesday, Thursdays are a little bit more filled than my mon Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. But um, the awesome thing about registration that I wanna plug real quick is you can put in your time blocks and kind of like times of the day that you don't wanna take classes or maybe have prior commitments like a job um, or any clubs, organizations that you're involved in. So you can really set your schedule um, to make it what you wanna be. Um, but for me, I, uh, I have always been someone who's really um, dedicated to their academics, so I typically spend most of my week um, in classes. Uh, like Tucker said, I think going to classes um, and not being absent as much really uh, reaps a lot more benefits uh, just because you don't miss the content that they talk about. Um, a lot of times classes are more discussion based, so it's not necessarily like you can cap catch up on online lectures. Um, so I'd say going to class is definitely very beneficial. Awesome. Cool. Um, what next question we have from the chat? Um, have any of you taken an avalanche safety class? And then what is it like? Well, I have bad news for whoever asked that question. I don't think any of us have taken an avalanche safety class. Um, my but roommate I do know... took it. Can I? So Go my on, roommate... That works. That works. Yeah, my roommate took the class. Um, it's really important because Bridger Bull and a couple other, uh, I think, uh, Big Sky, if you want to go into certain areas, you have to take those avalanche classes and you have to buy that avalanche beacon. Um, MSU offers that class because we want to make sure we understand you guys are here for skiing. Uh, he said it was uh, a lot more intense than he thought it was because he thought he was just going to go up there and ski a little bit. But it's uh, he's like, it, they treat it like it's life or death because it is life or death. You're, you're, you're messing around with avalanche and stuff like that. So it, it's a lot more intense, but it's it's kind of an easy class. You know, they walk through it. Uh, he said he really enjoyed it, and he's kind of proud that he's avalanche certified now. So he's able to go up there and ski, you know, the slushmans and stuff like that, some harder ski areas. So Awesome. Well, I'm glad that we have Tucker's roommate. <laughs> um. Awesome. Uh, then this one's for everybody. We had a question in the chat of what is your um, plans post-graduation with your degree? So we'll start with Tucker. What is your plans post-graduation? Uh, I'm actually moving to Colorado. Um, Denver is a huge tech scene with computer science. I've actually uh, had multiple offers from uh, like uh, multiple companies. I don't know if I can talk about it or not, but like Lockheed, Visa, and stuff like that have sent me multiple offers. And so after I graduate, I would love to be a cybersecurity and work for these really important companies, especially moving to Colorado because it's basically just, it's like Montana's little brother, basically. No, no, no hate or anything. Uh, Katie. Katie, what are your post-graduation plans? Sorry, my mic was not working. Um, so I'm pre-vet, so I plan to apply to graduate school to pursue a um, doctorate in veterinary science, um, probably, hopefully, fingers crossed, at uh, Colorado State University or at the University of Minnesota. Go Goves. Awesome. Cool. Melissa. Yeah, so um, I actually, when I enrolled in MSU, I didn't think I'd fall so in love, but um, after graduating, I plan to attend MSU grad school. I want to get my master's in um, public education public education curriculum and instruction um, to hopefully be able to build curriculum in rural areas. Um, after grad school, I'm moving to um, a rural part of Mexico uh, to help small populations uh, build curriculum is my eventual plan. Awesome. That'll be a lot of fun. Cody, what is your post-graduation plans? Yeah, so mine's sort of a little bit more long-term and I'm tacked on a little more years than I had planned to, but I'm also enrolled in the pre-professional vet medicine program, but I'm on the animal science side. So the I, ideal goal is to be able to work on cattle for the rest of my life. Um, I'm a sophomore right now, so my fourth semester. And so I've got a little bit left time at MSU, which I wouldn't trade for the world. And then ideally I'll be attending um, WSU in Pullman, Washington, going to vet school. And I'm thinking in between my time as an undergrad at MSU and my time as a graduate uh, at WSU, I would like to take probably two years, uh, go home, make sure the family ranch is set up and make sure that I've established my roots there uh, before I'm able to pursue my own career, so. Cool. All right. Um, 
We got a few more moments here before we're wrapping up. So if you have any final questions, make sure to use the uh, chat feature. Um, but I'm going to ask everybody, uh, what's your favorite memory of uh, being at Montana State? And maybe we can share that with some of our guests here today. I, I'm unmuted, so I can kind of kick it off, and I hope people will build on it. But I think uh, the earlier question was, how is college different than, than high school, whether it was about academics or involvement? Um, and I came to college being scared. I'm a rather uh, outgoing person. I don't have a whole lot of problem talking to somebody that I don't know and making a friend with them. But I was genuinely scared showing up to a place that I hadn't known. Uh, and I think you kind of hear some names. You hear some people, especially in Montana, that you know. Uh, and then you get on campus and you hear of either other people. Um, I knew Elaine before I came to uh, college, but I didn't, I'd never met him. And then you end up meeting him, and it's such a welcoming community. The people there want you just as involved as they are. They want to see you succeed and be academically successful uh, and plugged into the university with everybody else. And so whether it be that first uh, week while you're walking in the mall for Catapalooza or you're partaking in MSU debut events um, or a Bobcat football game, you meet somebody new and you realize that that community is there for you just as much as you need to be there for that community. And I think that that's what makes our alumni and our foundation so strong and something that uh, MSU is truly uh, striving towards. Awesome. Melissa, what's been your favorite memory of Montana State? Yeah, well, speaking of football games, Cody, my favorite memory, I think, was my first Brawl of the Wild, which was this year. So um, the year before, it was in Missoula. Oh, well, the Brawl of the Wild is the big um, game against our rival. It's Bobcats versus the Grizz, and it alternates um, in Missoula, Montana, and here every single year. Um, so the year before this one, it was in Missoula, so I wasn't able to go. And the year before that, um, because of COVID, I there was no game. So this year, it was my first Brawl of the Wild experience, and I think it was just the funnest day. Um, we had college game day on campus, which was huge. Uh, everyone was, like, super stoked uh, and all around good vibes. We ended up winning the game, so the Brawl of the Wild trophy uh, has found its home in Bozeman, which has been awesome. Awesome. Um... Katie. Yeah, um, so I would have to say probably, man, it's a, it's a hard to choose, but um, one of my favorite memories probably would have to be this year homecoming. Um, there's a big parade that downtown Bozeman like shuts down the entire community comes out and it was super fun um, I'm on the I was on the campus choir uh, women's choir um, so we had a performance that morning you walk out the doors and there's just this giant parade happening and then after that of course there's the football game and it, everyone is just super excited to be um, not only a Bozeman resident but also a Bobcat even people who aren't Bobcats were stoked to be Bobcats and it it was just one of the um, coolest memories I have being a student here. Awesome. Um, I'll go, I'll cut in here before Tucker. Um, probably one of my favorite experiences here uh, as a student um, has just been the growth that I've been able to have. Um, coming from a really small school, um, I came in for a farm and ranch degree um, and I've learned so much more than just um, how to run cattle. I've learned um, a lot of how to deal with people, leadership skills, um, speaking skills, um, the, the person I saw in the chat, Luke, you said, what's the farm and ranch degree you like? Um, it's an awesome way to learn a lot about business and learn about ag and have ag science as well as econ kind of in your pocket. So I recommend it. Um, but overall, the college experience has been not only just the, the growth you have in the classroom, but outside the class, classroom as well. So Tucker, what's been your favorite memory? I'm a huge stickler for cheesy lines. Uh, the the real treasure we made along the way was friendship, and that is 100% true. Uh, starting from my freshman year, you know, uh, like I was not very known, so I had to like hang out with some people, some floor mates. Uh, we went swing dancing, uh, and it was a lot of fun. We got to connect with a bunch of random people. And then after that, we went to a formal that one of the dorms had, and it was just a fun event to just meet people and figure it out. And then I'm actually still friends with those guys till this day. Some of us are graduated, some of us are still here. So it's just kind of cool to see other people living out their dreams and living out their like their college experience with you guys. So the, my, my favorite experience was my friendship. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, all right, we got time for one last question. Um, and I think we're gonna um, talk about just maybe a piece of advice you have for students, um, whatever it may be. Um, I, I have it as life lessons, um, but is there a life lesson for college you'd like to hand out to students um, before we head out? And also for everybody, um, if you um, 
if you have any more questions, feel free to contact the admissions office. They can put you in contact with students, put you in contact with the counselors. Um, there will be a recording of this webinar posted uh, online following uh, completion of this. So don't worry about if you miss something, you'll be able to find it. Um, and then also, if you have more questions, reach out to the admissions office. So Tucker, to put you in the hot seat, um, last question here for this evening. Um, life advice, life lesson you'd like to pass on to these potential new students. Don't be lazy. It, it college, it, you know, Ted, you're going to want to sleep in. I believe me, I'm a senior this year. I've, I've got it hard. Like, I'm like, ah, I didn't want to go to class. You know, I could just relax and look at the notes. Don't do that. Go to class, take your notes, tell your friends, you know, get in there. My one thing is like, if you try, you will do. You know, if some people are just saying, I'm not good at school. Well, you need to try harder. And I, I hate to say that, but yes, try harder and don't be lazy. <laughs> That's good advice. That's good advice, Tucker. Katie, what advice do you have um, here as a second year student? Um, don't be afraid to try something new. Um, I came to MSU undeclared. I entered in the university studies department and I thought I hated biology. And then my advisor told me she thought I looked like a biology person and I took a class and I loved it. And I'm now microbiology pre-vet. Um, and I was terrified to take the hard classes, but um, you put in the work, just like Tucker says, and you will you will see the feedback. So um, just don't be scared to try something new. Awesome. Melissa. Yeah, so um, actually I got asked this question today, and so I thankfully have a response already. But um, so I would say that my biggest advice to incoming freshmen is take up space. And by that, I mean in a classroom, in a setting, in the club or organization, run for office, do something out of your comfort zone, just kind of like what Katie said. Um, I think the biggest thing that I've taken away from my last three years here is just uh, how valid it is to take up space in certain rooms. And um, it's definitely empowering and you find people who will uplift you when you take up that space. Uh, so that I think that would be my biggest piece of advice. Nice. Uh, I like that, Mel. Um, Cody. Yeah, so I'm going to lead it with a quote, and my first quote that I have to say is, don't get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. That's something I was told my senior year at our graduation by our keynote speaker, and it's really carried me through that college. I've taken a little bit less of an academic route in my college experience in some cases and gotten very involved. I've tried to not say no, and that's not always the best case but it definitely has something to show for. I've got more checks than I care to admit on my resume, and I, I consider myself a very well-known um, and very appreciated person. I'm currently not even on campus. I'm out here helping an organization that's very near and dear to my heart, and I think that that's something that you're going to remember after your time at MSU. So there's a very big balance, and I'm still struggling to find that, so make sure you're working on that first, uh, but definitely don't be afraid to, to uh, start your life early before you get that degree to prove it. Good advice. Um, I'll close out. Um, mine is, oh, it's always who you know and not what you know. It's important to know stuff, but it's always good to meet a lot of people. So make a LinkedIn. Um, you know, don't be, don't be afraid to go talk to other freshmen when you come to campus because they're in the same boat as you. They just got dumped off by their parents and they're in a new place um, with a bunch of new people. So um, don't be afraid to come talk to people. Um, add them on LinkedIn. Um, add them on whatever kind of social media you're on and uh, Start making those connections that are you never know how valuable they're going to be later on in college or later on in life. So with that, I think we're done for this evening. Uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Like I said, this will be posted on YouTube afterwards. I'd also like to give a big thank you to all of our panelists tonight. Um, they volunteered to help us out. Um, they're busy students, as you can't, if you can tell. Um, so thank you for doing that. It means a lot, guys. Um, and then, uh, yeah, once again, if you have any more questions, reach out to the admissions office here at Montana State. Um, and they'll help be do everything in their power to help you answer your questions. So thank you guys for coming and I hope you have a lovely, lovely evening. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks guys. Thank you.